a good narrative. All right, joining me now to discuss a possible tax nightmare for gig workers and online sellers is the Vice President of Research for the National Taxpayers Union, Damian Brady. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me on today. I appreciate it. Uh, when we talk about gig workers, we're talking about people who may have part-time work or even full-time work and a side hustle like driving for DoorDash or Uber or what have you. Donald Trump said he wanted to see no tax on tips. Kamala Harris said, oh yeah, me too. And she's making it sound like that was her idea. But you're going to tell me that there's some bad, some bad news in store. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, on there's it's related issue. Um, this is all thanks to a law that was passed in 2021 that is going to dr that drastically decreased the reporting threshold for the 1099K form. Uh, this is the, the form used by platforms like eBay and Venmo, Google Pay, Apple Pay to report their customers' transactions to the IRS. So this is going to impact gig workers, uh, Uber delivery guys. Anybody who sells casually online or anybody who uses Venmo. And so what happened here is the 2021 law lowered the threshold to just $600. It used to be 200 transactions amounting to over $20,000. So now it's just $600. This is going to cause a lot of confusion for millions of taxpayers because not all of these transactions are going to get reported on this form to the IRS are taxable or some of them are only partially taxable. So the risk here, the one big concern here is that a lot of people are going to have to spend a lot of time to go through these transactions and document which ones are taxable, which ones aren't, or they have to spend out of pocket for tax advice on this. And then a bigger risk is that a lot of people who don't understand the law and are afraid of the IRS are going to end up reporting more in income than they should. So thankfully, uh, Congress is working on Representative Carol Miller's Venmo Act that would fix this problem and restore the previous threshold. So this will, you know, a lot of people just making extra money online uh, and worried about inflation shouldn't have to be worried about uh, confusing IRS tax forms. So you're talking about the kind of people that might sell um, a small amount of items on Etsy, right? You know, and the, there's a whole market out there. I know I've I've bought my son kind of cool uh, shirts on Redbubble and Tee Public. You have independent artists that will make will make fan art T-shirts, custom work, but they're only making they're not making millions of dollars doing this. I mean, if you go on some of these craft sites, like I said, like Etsy, you get very small businesses where people are doing it almost like a hobby, maybe like a side hustle, but they cer certainly aren't, you know, paying their mortgage and paying their way with what they earn. Yeah, exactly. So if you sell an old bike on Facebook Marketplace and you're selling it for a loss, that shouldn't be taxable. But the IRS would have you go back and research uh, the, the original amount so that way you, you can document whether or not you're, you're selling it for less than you paid. This also impacts any college student who's selling their previous textbooks on eBay. Or if you uh, get venmo by friends after splitting up a dinner or from roommates after splitting up rent, that could show up on the 1099K form, and that's not income. That's not taxable. So yeah, it's, Congress needs to, to step up and stop this tax confusion for millions of taxpayers next year. Well, let me ask you, just to, just to play devil's advocate a little bit, and it's funny that you say that about selling on Facebook Marketplace. I'm a kid of the 80s. I had a 1984 mongoose. My son, you know, heard the stories of dad's bike and one came up for sale and it was for not a lot of money. So I said, hey, bud, you want to want to go get this bike? And we drove two hours to get the bike. Why wouldn't Facebook Marketplace just handle that or eBay or any of these sites? If they're selling on behalf, consignment on behalf of their customers, why wouldn't they deal with the processing for the IRS? Well, yeah, they are going to have to report this information to the IRS if you exceed six hundred dollars, and it could be very easy uh, selling, you know, an old desk uh, on any of these platforms, and that's going to trigger the requirement for these companies to inform the IRS about this transaction. And you know, another interesting uh, point here is, I mean, we know this is terribly confusing because the IRS has delayed implementing this for two years in a row because they know the taxpayers are just gonna have a heck of a time trying to figure this stuff out. And what they've done this year uh, for this next tax season, they said that they're gonna enforce the threshold at $5,000. Now, while this would provide for 
a lot of relief for a lot of people. It raises a lot of serious questions because I mean, there have been instances you can think of, especially with the hurricane going on now, where the IRS will delay some requirements for people who are I- impacted by this disaster. But I cannot think of any other situation where the IRS has just decided to set its own threshold that's different from what's in law. So that's another reason why Congress needs to uh, step up on this, rein in the IRS and provide clarity for taxpayers. I thought the Democrats were out there for the little guy. Yeah, and the the burden of this is going to fall on those people that the Biden administration have said were going to be protected from higher taxes, uh, those making less than two hundred thousand dollars. So that those are the people who are going to be impacted by this. The hardworking people are just trying to make ends meet, uh, dealing with the record high inflation that we have now. All right. Thank you so much for joining us.